everybody and welcome back to our channel. So today's video is going to be all things postpartum. I am two months postpartum from my third childbirth with my son Eli and I wanted to just share how things are going with postpartum recovery, breastfeeding, transitioning to three kids, birth control plans, and everything in between. I had asked on Instagram some of your questions that you had that you wanted me to talk about in this video. So I'm going to um, reference those and kind of cover a couple other things. So just starting with postpartum recovery, um, for those of you who may not know, with my son Eli, um, the last month of my pregnancy was really difficult in the sense that I had preterm labor and was on best bed rest for the last basically month of my pregnancy and he ended up being born early um, technically he was born at 36 weeks and four days um, and the last month of my pregnancy was really challenging mentally and physically because I was on strict bed rest I could not walk I could not drive I could not do pretty much anything um, and so having him was like having all of this freedom that I didn't expect um, or I hadn't experienced in a while. And so for me, giving birth was actually quite a relief because I felt like I had my life back, as weird as that sounds. Um, for me, with postpartum recovery with all of my kids, I've actually recovered very well. Even the nurses and the doctors at the hospital are like, I couldn't believe you just had a child, even if you told me, um, you know, that that happened. It, you just don't act or recover the same way that, you know, like you're recovering faster, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So with that, I've always had really good postpartum recoveries. Um, Eli's was the same. I had the same types of tears that I had with my girls. Um, I had a second degree tear and then a tear near, near my urethra. So I had some stitching. Um, the only thing that was a little bit different with Eli, um, was that my afterbirth pains, I feel like they lasted longer. Like I was on Tylenol at home for kind of just that cramping for a little bit longer than I was with the girls, but it was very mild, very manageable. And overall recovery was really, really great for me. Um, the one thing that I did have with him that I had with Isabel, I never had with Emma, but was worse with him. And I think it was because of my bed rest as well was that, um, I had really bad hemorrhoids, um, <laughs> recovering with him that lasted like actually like longer, I feel like than almost the postpartum bleeding. And so that was just kind of the one thing that was unique and different to him. Um, yeah, but overall, I, my recovery was really great. Um, things that I learned with my prior pregnancies definitely benefited me with my recovery time with him. And I feel like I want to do a separate video about like things that I've learned about postpartum recovery after three babies. Um, but lots of sits baths and just taking it easy. And um, yeah, things just really snapped back into place and like I said the biggest difference for me was I felt like I had my life back um, and it felt good mentally and physically for me to be able to move and do things again. So jumping into breastfeeding with him he was an amazing breastfeeder from the beginning. Um, he was really easy to nurse. He latched right away. Um, Isabel was very much the same way. Emma was took a little bit learning for both of us because she was my first. Um, but overall, breastfeeding went really, really well. For him, we did have to supplement because of his jaundice and his blood sugars with being um, a preemie. But that only was like for the first week of his life. So like when we were in the hospital and then when we came home and his jaundice levels were really high and he was on the billy blanket, he had to be on formula as well. Um, but other than that, he is exclusively breastfed and has been. He's a great nurser. He is my little tank boy is what I call him because he just eats all the time. <laughs> um, and we've just done really well for both of the girls. I breastfed them till they were 18 months old and then they self weaned. Um, for him, I'm looking to do the same. We'll kind of follow his cues and see how long he wants to nurse. Um, which means I'll be pumping at work again and that's super fun. Um, but I already have a really good milk stash because of my Haka. Um, and I'll have a link below to what I'm talking about. It's a silicone breast pump. And I wish I would have had this with my girls because it's a non-invasive breast pump. Basically, you just attach it when you're nursing. And the side that you're not nursing on, which naturally lets down 
um, just from your body, it catches all of the extra milk. So I have probably over 200 ounces now um, at eight weeks postpartum exclusively from my Haka. I have not had one pump session with my actual pump and I won't until I go back to work because I've been able to just collect all the extra from the letdown. It's literally amazing and I'm really upset I didn't have it with my other kids because I always had extra like milk in a breast pad or just would leak through my shirt and now I'm like actually collecting that and it makes a huge difference for us with our milk storage. So the other thing that I got a lot of questions about was transitioning from two to three kids. How did that go? How are the girls adjusting? How is Isabella adjusting? Um, transitioning to, from two to three kids has been very similar from two, one to two for us. And I know that that's not the case for a lot of people, but because Emma is seven, Isabel is two, um, having a child that is significantly older than the younger two makes a very big difference. Um, Isabel is very good with Eli. She has not been jealous at all. She loves him. She adores him. Um, and I think part of that as well is that she follows Emma's cues. She's always looked up to Emma, um, obviously as her big sister, everything she does, she's like in awe of. And so she relates to Eli a lot of how Emma relates to Eli. She wants to help. Um, she doesn't like when he's crying. And so she's been very patient and very understanding. There have been times obviously where she gets jealous. Um, Emma still has those times with Eli as well, where, um, you know, Isabel wants me to hold her or she wants me to put her to bed and I can't do that because I'm feeding the baby or he's fussy. And so we've had moments like that where we've had to talk to her and say, you know, mommy's busy and the baby can't, the baby needs mommy. So daddy's going to do this. Um, and she does well. She adjusts well. Again, I think following Emma's cues, Emma is a fantastic big sister. She has been the best helper with Isabel. She's always been great with her. And even so more now, um, when we're both busy with something, like if my husband is doing homework at night and then I'm by myself because he has to get his homework done or he's in school, um, Emma takes the lead and helps with everything. She'll get Isabel's jammies on. She's just, she's incredible. And so for us, it's been a really great transition and having a child again, that's significantly older than the younger two has been huge and instrumental in helping with that because they're not like two and four, they're two and seven. And so just, it makes a very big difference. Um, again, that age gap wasn't intentional for us. If you're new here, we struggled with secondary infertility. I had two miscarriages between Emma and um, Isabel. And so it didn't ha like happen that we planned it that way. It just happened. And um, it's been a blessing in disguise, honestly. So Overall, the girls are doing great. They love him. They're not jealous of him. It's it's an adjustment. I mean, there's times where I'm like, I only have two hands and two arms. Um, but again, most of the time when I am in that situation, it's Emma who I'm like, hey, honey, you need to do this, this, and this because mom can't. Um, so overall, it's been really a great transition. Okay, so next I want to talk about um, weight loss and um, just how my body's been recovering. So I talked about this in my pregnancy updates. I did not gain any weight with Eli. With my pregnancy with Eli, I actually lost eight pounds total. And then since I've had him, I've lost another like 22. So I'm down 30 pounds from my pre-pregnancy weight. Um, that's just how my body was with Isabel. That's how my body was with him. And so I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> um, breastfeeding has obviously been instrumental too in dropping the extra weight um, that's happened since I've had him. Um, and then obviously having him, having all of your, you know, just extra liquids and stuff have contributed to my weight loss. Um, one of the questions that I got is, do I have a goal that I wanna hit? Yes and no. I'm not really stressing about losing weight right now. I'm just kind of naturally letting it come off with breastfeeding, being more intentional with my choices, um, trying to eat low carb, trying to not eat as many sweets and sugars, drinking more water, that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm not really putting any pressure on it right now while I'm still nursing Eli. Once I have, um, you know, once he's probably a year old and things are a little bit different, I'll probably start to really set like my weight loss goals now that I'm done, done having kids. Um, but I don't really have anything specific in mind other than being healthy. I would like to lose more weight. Um, I'm not, you know, really stressing about it right now, if that makes sense. 
Um, one of the questions I got uh, <laughs> is have I lost any hair postpartum now? And I have not, I mean, I cut my hair. Um, for me, like postpartum hair loss, I start to get the baby hairs and all of that. So it'll come with time, but I haven't lost a ton of it yet. So the next big topic that I've gotten asked about is birth control plans and what are we planning to do? So Eli is our last, we are done having babies, which is a happy, sad, moment um i'm feeling a lot of like sadness as he's growing and you know we're we're moving out of the newborn stage into that infant stage but we are for sure for sure for sure done and so for birth control right now what we're planning on is i am on the mini pill um which is a progesterone only pill i believe or estrogen only I, it's only one of the hormones i can't quite remember which is what is ideal for breastfeeding i was on the mini pill with emma after i had her and it did not affect my um, milk or anything with her and so i know that it's one that works well for us i had no birth control after isabel um and because of our secondary infertility we weren't going to go back on birth control and if we got pregnant we got pregnant um so I haven't been on birth control in a really long time. I don't like hormonal birth control. And so the plan is to have Scott have a vasectomy here in the very near future. And then I will go off birth control once everything is finished and clear with that. And that's how we're planning to, um, you know, make sure we don't have any more babies. Well, one of the questions I got is, um, where does Eli sleep at night? How do we plan to transition to him to a crib? He sleeps with us in our room in his DACA tot. Um, I don't plan to transition to him to his crib for a while because him and Isabel will be sharing a room. So I think for him, he probably won't be moving to his crib until he's, you know, six, eight, you know, six to eight months old, somewhere in that range. Once he's more solid sleeping through the night um, and it won't affect Isabel's current sleep schedule because she sleeps amazing. <laughs> and so I don't want to disrupt that. So no real plan to transition him anytime soon. And the, and the thing that I'll wrap up with is when do I plan to go back to work? And I am going to be home with Eli for 12 weeks. And I actually will be going back to work and working remote for three weeks before I head into the office. So my first day technically back to work is October 14th, but Eli will not be going to daycare until the first week of November. I'm very fortunate that I have the flexibility that I have, um, that my employer and my job allows for kind of this, this flexibility. I know a lot of moms who don't have it, that they don't have any benefits, that they have to go back to work really early. I have been very blessed to be able to be home with my kids for 12 weeks, as terrible as that sounds, because it should be longer than 12 weeks. America um, but that's a different topic I won't get into it um, but yeah so that is my plan um, it's come really fast you guys I just feel like it's I have blinked and we're here I don't want to think about it because I've honestly like been teary-eyed and emotional thinking about it because that transition from being home with him to going back to life as normal is difficult um, because it's I don't have that bonding time with him the the constant day-to-day -day of just him and I and understanding him and his rhythms and so it's it's a lot to take on when they're only three months old um but that's honestly a totally separate topic that I could talk about for probably 20 minutes so I will be doing a um day in the life of maternity leave I think I'm going to film that Monday and then I'll be doing a day in the life my first day back to work that's one of my highly viewed videos on the channel and so if there's anything specific you guys want to see in that let me know in the comments below uh but that's it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it that it caught you up on kind of how things have been going. I know I haven't sat down and done like a talking vlog like this for a while, but things are going really well and we're just enjoying our time at home. So we will see you guys next time. Thanks again for watching. Bye.